In this tutorial, we are going to go over the process for creating a seamless overlapping circle pattern. Uh, to get started, we're going to use our ellipse tool and holding down control while dragging out, we're just going to drag out a perfect circle and the, we want to set our dimensions for the circle to 0.2 inches. We'll just move it down here. Once you have that done, we want to grab our contour tool and we're going to use it to create nine steps at 0.2 inches per step. So when you do that, each gap between each circle will be 0.2 inches which will be crucial for creating our seamless pattern. Uh, once you have that done, if you go ahead and hit Control K on the keyboard, it will separate the um, the overlapping or the contour elements into uh, separate objects. Uh, with them still selected, go ahead and click up here, ungroup all objects. With them still selected, go ahead and hit combine in the pathfinder to combine them into one object. And we'll just add a black fill and a I'm going to right click on this X here to get rid of the stroke. And so if your circles should look like mine, if they're inverted where the center, very center circle is black, that means you just need one more one more step in your contour uh, so you're gonna want them your circles to look like this once that's done we're going to use our bezier tool and holding down clicking and holding down shift we're going to create a horizontal line we'll switch to by clicking on the line again we'll get our rotate uh, nodes and we're just going to hold down control while rotating to constrain to uh, 15 degree increments and before we let go just hit the right click button on your mouse and it will duplicate as you rotate the objects so you get your crosshair elements so we'll select both of those and then select the, the circle object and using the Align and Distribute Docker. If you don't have that uh, on the right side here, if you go up to Window, Dockers, you can find it here. So with that, with those elements selected, we're going to align the vertical or the horizontal centers and the vertical centers so that our crosshair is directly centered on our circles here. Uh, once that's done, the next thing we need is a square. So we'll grab the rectangle tool and we're just going to click, hold down control and drag out so that our square goes beyond the uh, outermost uh, circle edge. So we want it about yay big. Uh, just and also keep it inside the outermost parts of the crosshair uh, guide here. Uh, once you have your square, we'll select our pick tool, select our rectangle, then select the horizontal line here. And again, using the align uh, docker here, we want to align to the top, deselect, select the rectangle or the square, and then select the vertical and we want to align to the left. So this will put uh, our square directly in our vertical and horizontal centers here, uh, which is going to be important for the next part. Uh, so select the, the square and select the circles. And using your Pathfinder tools at the top, we want to intersect to get just this bottom bottom right quadrant of the circles into its own individual object. 
Um, before we go to the next step, um, because there are nodes directly in the centers of the, the circle here, or the circle objects here, when you intersect, Corel gives you extra, extra nodes, which are going to be a little troublesome, so I just go ahead and double click on the extra ones just to delete them. And once go ahead and do that if you have those extra nodes. And almost there. Oops. Sometimes you can accidentally add a node or delete the wrong one, so if you do that, just hit Control Z and double click on the other node. So, once you have that cleaned up, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to hit plus on the keyboard to duplicate these red, this red object here, and it duplicates right on top of the original. So, with it still selected, we're going to click again to get our rotation uh, nodes here and we're going to hold down control and rotate 90 degrees to the left and we'll just move it down slightly and we'll take our original uh, red circles we'll give it a green or different just a different color just so that we can tell the difference between the two and we're going to do the same thing except we're going to rotate 90 degrees to the right and again we're just going to move it slightly over uh, so your two circle quadrant objects here should look similar to what I have once you have that done the next thing we need to do is up under the view menu we need to turn on our objects snap uh, which is alt -Z plus z for the shortcut because we're going to snap our our nodes into play or our objects into place so uh, if you kind of hover your cursor um, along the edge of this red object here once you get close to the corner points here it'll switch to node so if you click and hold down control while you're doing selecting that you want to drag it up until it snaps to the node of the black circle here so now they should be perfectly aligned here and we're going to do the same thing with the green circle so if we get our cursor near the corner here it switches to the node we're going to click hold down control and drag to the left until it snaps to the the node of the black circle so once you've done that it should look like this we're going to select our two objects here and we're going to just oops we're going to move click and drag and while still selected hit the right mouse button to duplicate the next thing we want to do is we're going to grab well first we're gonna uh, uh, yeah no, never mind uh, so we'll select our green circles here and what we're going to do is use our contour tool again except this time we only need one step and uh, we're going to change our uh, step increment to point zero two and we're going to switch to an inside contour so it should look something something like this uh, once that's done again hit control K on the key keyboard to separate the two the white from the green here we'll switch back to our pick tool and we're just using this white uh, we'll switch it to uh, a blue we're using these blue the blue uh, new the new blue object here 
as kind of a trimming tool um, just because uh, for the step after this. So with the blue selected, uh, then select the blue first, then select the red objects, and we're going to trim the blue from the red. So once you've done that, you can select the blue objects and just delete it. Next thing we want is we want to get rid of these uh, the red objects, red parts of the circle that are in the white negative space of the green parts here in these two gaps. So we're just going to hit Control K on the board keyboard with the red object selected. So it selects all, separates all these red pieces into individual objects. Once that is done, you can go ahead and select these red pieces in here and delete them because we, we don't need them. So once you've done that, you should have what I have here on the screen. With that uh, done, we're just going to select them all and we're going to weld them into one solid object. So it should look like this. So uh, having the trimming out from that contour piece just makes a cleaner uh, union when you weld the, the separate objects together. So with that done, we'll just switch the fill back to black. And next thing we want to do is now we're going to create our uh, seamless pattern. So to do that, we're going to take the object and we're going to click, sh hold down shift and right click to duplicate and what we want to do is grab this node here or any of them on this vertical center here and you're going to click, hold down control and snap it back to the node on the first object here. So should look something like uh, actually I forgot a step here uh, we want to before we do that we want to rotate this duplicate object 90 degrees to the right so it should look like this <laughs> so we'll snap it back again so once you've duplicated and snapped back your two objects should look like this. Once you have that done, we're going to select both objects and we're going to duplicate them down below. And with them still selected, we're going to rotate those 180 degrees and then snap it back to, oops, back up to the top object here. So, once you're all done, it should look like that. Uh, if you, if it doesn't, you may have over-rotated one of the, the objects here. Uh, so it's an easy fix, but you should have like this center square here if you have rotated things correctly. Um, uh, with that done, we'll just grab these, just move it out of the way here. We're going to turn, we don't need our snap anymore, so we'll turn that off. So uh, go ahead and select the four objects here, and we're going to duplicate that, and we're going to uh, weld them into one solid shape. And yeah. So with that done, we will uh, we have our our base pattern done. So now we can go ahead and let's duplicate another object. We'll change the dimensions to one inch, and we'll use the transformations panel here. And the reason. 
The reason I changed it to one inch is just for the ease of using the, the transformation panel here. So we'll move it on the x-axis one inch and we'll make I don't know, six copies. Hit apply. We'll select those and we'll change our transformation to negative one inch on the y-axis and we have easily created a seamless pattern using uh, just a simple circles um, so uh, yeah uh, so once you've done that you can have fun playing around with your original pattern here. Uh, we'll grab that and duplicate. We'll change it to one inch just for this purposes. And you can, by simply rotating uh, the circles, you can create a wholly different pattern. So we'll select that. Do this. So you get that pattern. So if we duplicate over and do that, do that. So you can you can see how quickly you can get variations of pattern, like seamless patterns, using the same four. Uh, objects here, just rotating them, you know, slightly. Um, you know, like we did something like this. Here we go. Like so. Uh, so yeah, you can have many different variations. Um, for whatever kind of look you're going for. Um, yeah. Uh, thanks for watching. I uh, hope you enjoyed it and learned some interesting techniques that you can utilize for whatever project you're working on. Uh, please like, subscribe, and share uh, this video. Uh, it'd be helpful uh, for growing the channel and allowing me to do more of these tutorials. Thanks for watching.